I like doing that because it saves a thumbnail. All right, let's try this again. All right. Of course, Keith is back. All right, some of you guys are coming back. Thank you. And we'll try to get our dude in here in a second. Keith, stop sending requests. I'm going to beat your ass. Ouch. Uh, let's try this. All right, let him give him a second to get back in here. Yeah, this is the fun part. Um, trying to get this shit to work every time seamlessly is impossible. Again, just going to keep trying. Yeah, right, dude. You'd never. We'll wait for our dude to come back in. We'll try to just keep trying. Again, tell me if, no, he's not back yet, but we had our guy from uh, Back to the Future. He was really excited about sharing screenshots and couldn't do it on a laptop, man. Couldn't do it. I don't know uh, if it's a Instagram coding thing or what, but we'll try it. Just keep trying. Wait for him to come back now. Um, and again, guys, send questions in, man. I'm going to ask him anything you send. Well, within reason. I'm going to ask him whatever uh, questions you submit. So go down the bottom, hit that little question bubble, submit a question, and it'll be asked. Bunch of new faces. All right. Trying this again, Tony. I don't know what the hell's going on, but let's try that. There we go. Yo! How's, that, man? How's it going? Good, man. How are you? I was going to suggest if you wanted to jump over to my page and do it, because as soon as I signed on, there was like 60 people saying hi and shit. So I was like, yo, why don't you guys go over to this page? I'm about to do this. Well, there's 30 now, so we're getting there. Yeah, they were uh, they were popping in for sure. I can I know exactly when you were saying it. it was boom, 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 boom. Well, hey, man, uh, let me get the nerves out meeting you here. Jeez. Uh... <clears throat> Fan of, fan of 20 some years and uh you saying okay is, is pretty awesome dude this is sweet for sure uh yeah we're just i had your shit playing in the background bumping it and of course uh dilio came on right as i was trying to figure everything out it was like an omen that's terrible i didn't know what, i didn't know what the dilio was hopefully you turned it off, <laughs> turned it off. so uh, uh I, my, I, my fucking my screen keeps going dark i don't know why you're you're good on this end for sure Okay. So you're uh, uh, West Coast right now? Yeah, I live in uh, I live in Los okay. Angeles. Okay, cool. Uh, I lived there very briefly with my wife for her job, and uh, I fucking loved it. I came from New York City, grew up in Pittsburgh, but the bigger the city, the better. Um, so for those of you who are following me, and I can't imagine you don't know who this guy is. If you don't, Tony, could you give us a background on who the hell are you? Uh... So my name's Tony Lovato, um, 5'9". On a good day, I weigh 156 pounds. Um, fuck my screen. I hope this is... I'm going to let it go black next time and see. we'll see what happens. Um, okay, yeah, it looks good over here still. I don't know if it's just on your end. I don't know. I don't know if it's fucking... Let me see. Um, I sing in a band called Mest, originally from Chicago, Illinois. Blue Island, technically. Um, but yeah, you know, I've been doing that for, fuck, what are we at now? 28 years? Something? I don't fucking know. It's since 1995, so whatever the, whatever the math of that is. Um, that was, that was uh, middle school for me, 95. Yeah, I, uh, well, I would have been, actually, I think I was still in high school. I mean, meaning I wasn't kicked out yet when I started the band. Started the band when I was 15, and then uh, I got kicked out when I was 15. So right after, pretty much started the band, I got kicked out of high school. Perfect, so, perfect timing. Yeah. Speaking of high school, I showed you this. This has been on, it was on my backpack all through high school, man. Nice, I, have, I, have, I actually just found a couple of those in storage. Oh, no shit. Yeah. And then uh, this one never made it to my bag. I liked it too much to put safety pins through when I was younger. But, the, but they're still okay, sitting yeah. here with the Nirvana and the Yin Yang and the black and red nautical star patches. I couldn't get rid of them. Yeah, I think and I, a name tag that said I, Butch for some reason. I don't know why. I may have one of those and uh, a couple of those messed head ones. We oh, debated yeah. making them again, but I don't know, man. I don't know if people. 
our age put patches on anything. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's. It's weird. Like I think it'd be our our group, our age group would stuff. If I got if I went to a show and saw a patch, I'd be buying it. And I don't. I really don't see them anymore. Unfortunately, it's all yeah. t-shirts, hoodies, and dude, sweatpants. I see sweatpants at shows for sale. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I guess. I, need to do, I, was I guess that's with, a thing. Uh, I was talking with my merch uh, guy today, and we were. I was like, we need to come up with some ideas. I'm like. I was like lighters and fucking coffee cups and, yeah. and coolies. I'm like, cause it's a different generation and people want different fucking things, you know? And I never really thought about sweatpants, but we are a uh, sweatpant generation right now. Oh I yeah. Would say. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, maybe that's why maybe all of us old heads are going or like, I want to spend money on something with mess logo, but you know, I don't, right. I don't, I have a lot of t-shirts already, man. I'd buy right. the sweatpants. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's right. true. Uh, so where'd the band name come from? Uh, um, a lot of people know the story, but funny enough, some people don't. Um, I was 15 at that time. Like, there was a lot of alternative music going on, meaning like fucking Bush and Weezer and stuff like that, um, which I definitely listened to. I think you had to be on the rock to not listen to it. Um, and we we drank a lot in our youth, um, as most kids like us did. Oh, yeah. um, and Bush was already taken, obviously. And that was the cheap bear that we drank. And then oh, the other bear that we drank in the Midwest, and I don't know if you had it out there in Pittsburgh and in New York, but uh, Milwaukee's best bear was the other, like, I mean, you get, like, a 12-pack for, like, four bucks or something like that. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it would be like, yo, Dad, can I have some money? I'm going to 7-Eleven. And he thought I was probably, like, buying candy or some shit. And uh, you pick up a fucking 12-pack for, like, four bucks and... That would last the two nights. And uh, so yeah, I was just sitting at my cousin's house and there was like a couple cases on the table and I was pretty lit. And uh, I don't know, somehow I like put the M over the B and I was like, what about mest? And it was like, it just sort of, sort of, Done. Sort of stuck. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then fun, uh, a fun quick story about that too, is that uh, I met Andrew WK um, around 2002 two right when his song was breaking that party hard song oh, yeah. um and we did this like radio college show with us under in law and him and uh he was in the elevator and i was like yo what's up dude i'm like we're playing the show too and introduced myself and said the band name and he was like oh shit he was like before he became andrew wk which I, might even be his real name i'm not really sure i don't I never, even know <laughs> yeah yeah i've never done the research on that um but they were going to be called the mest and it was going to be spelled the same way i guess m-e-s-t and they had a little character and everything and then they did yeah. their research and found out that we were already established and doing it so too slow motherfucker <laughs> yeah so he so he became andrew wk which worked out for him so. oh hell yeah who drew the little guy do you know because of oh, that shit. When, yeah when when he, when he first oh there was my head when he first uh when he first drew it it was the guy didn't have hair he had like um like a shaved head and like a, a widow's peak and it looked just like one of our friends and so we would just would always make jokes about it and then next thing i know it just became like we put some little spiky weird hair on him and it became the guy that we'd put on everything and you know like i don't know if we were like thinking about a logo or what it was but it just sort of became the guy that we'd put on flyers and shit and then like Here's the like original fucking massive tattoo that has ever existed. Where is it at? Let me see. It. There he oh, is. Nice. That little guy. Yeah, there and he I is. Had, uh, some Christmas ornaments this year where I uh, sent it to a friend. I sent it to the people that make the fucking ornaments and put angel wings on them, and it turned into a Christmas ornament for all the <laughs> Christians out there. That's awesome. Who uh, do you have a lot of say or all say in merch? Like, do you get to go? Well, I want to do. Or does someone bring it to you? Like, here's four or five things we've done. How does that work? I've had people hit me up that are artists that are like, yeah, I've got these designs. And like, we do this, we have this one that's, uh, it's called like the, it's um, on our merch page, it's called Mohawk Skull. And that was actually a Bad Religion shirt that Bad Religion wanted and then didn't want. And um, so it was just up for grabs. Like, there's sites you can go to. So I, that was the way I got that one. Um, and then usually it's pretty simple. Like if I just come up with an idea or something and, uh, have an artist draw it up and shit. So sweet. Pretty simple. Yeah. Awesome. 
Um, talking about your the discography, I wanted to share with you uh, the three biggest uh, albums for us growing up. And we were into Destination Unknown was the top because that was when we were just about to graduate. And it was like, you're kind of coming into your own. We we're starting to jam out a good bit. But we caught like the tail end of the wasting time ride. And we were like getting pumped on it. And it must have been, I feel like it was weeks before Destination Unknown came out. And is it 2001, I think? Uh, dude, that scene, <laughs> that scene got played constantly. None of us could afford a Cadillac. And we were all like really taking fucked up kid as like a title. Right. So we took we took your shit and like yeah, then. this this gets this guy gets it. Yeah, this is exactly what we're uh I mean just the beginning to Cadillac. How how pumped are you to play that? Is it still like do you get sick of playing like the to me like the big bangers, but I mean you can't play every song every show. Um I mean, no, it, it's fun. Uh you know, like like with Cadillac we do this like medley. All right, my my phone is my black again, but I'm gonna let it chill. Yep. And if it if I get disconnected, then I'll just connect back on. Um, oh, now we might be losing you. Let's wait it out. Oh, there you go. Get back. Yep. I gotta figure this out. What if I go? Let me let me um. Give me two seconds. I'm gonna go into my settings. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably lose you for a second. You're good. I'm going to my settings and make it so my screen can't go black because that's sure. what's happening. Let's take a look at your guys' questions. How good are these questions you're asking? All right. I like these questions, guys. Nice. I've had some really crappy questions come over here. Like, shit, I'm just not going to ask. You know, these are good. Oh, cool. Cool. Reveal 87. Uh, yours is getting asked for sure. That's a good question. Yeah. Keith, I'm thinking you mean the best band you toured with, right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to get with. Oh, there's Jack. Jack. Jack, the Lit Band fan. In the meantime, guys, go give Jack, the Lit Band fan, a follow. Uh, only good vibes on that page, man. A lot of good stuff. And if you're listening to Mesh, you're probably listening to Lit. You had to. All right. Here's the thing. I'm going to, um, I figured it out, but I can't do it while I'm on the phone with you. So, Two seconds. I'm gonna sign off. Turn off the fucking um, because it's every thirty seconds. I have my shit set. Sure. To yeah. And for some reason, it's happening. So give me two seconds. I'll do this real quick. Cool. All right. Two influences again, guys. Uh, keep shooting those questions to the questions section. There's so many of you asking that they get lost in this feed instantly. So yeah, shoot them down that bottom right. That little link, man. Send them away, and um, I'll try to ask. There's not a million questions in here, so I can probably ask all these. Keep them coming. Um, I'm probably going to be asking him pretty quick. I'm going to talk a little bit some about some of these albums in a couple shows, but then it's on to your questions for sure. All right, let's scoop them back up. Gravy. All right. Cool. Cool. Yep. All right, now we should be good see i was asking if it's you know I, I bet it's fun playing these songs that people like um but yeah you were saying you, you turned cadillac into part of the medley yeah so i mean after playing songs for fucking years you want to make them fun for you and the one thing is too like when when i was torn with the original guys we we played a lot of the same shit on every tour right and so then when I got the new guys on board, the guys would start bringing up songs that were their favorites. Oh, nice. And shit that, like, we've never, ever played live, because there are definitely tracks that, I mean, there's still tracks to this day that I've never played live. Um, and I was like, fuck, yeah, that would actually be fun to play live. So I actually started adding a lot of shit to the set list that I've never played. So for me, that's a lot of fun, because yeah. it's a whole new fucking experience 20 years down the road. Hell yeah. Um, so we it's friday night you know i was just gonna say i should have mine on camera though with you um F fake cheers i'll, I'll choose you you know what i mean but uh 
so yeah, I mean, I still enjoy, it doesn't matter like how many times we've played these songs. For me, it's like when the crowd fucking goes off and they're singing every word, you know, like St. Louis is one of our fucking second homes. Um, and, you know, we played there a couple months ago and after, I mean, it was just a fucking awesome show. And we're like, the crowd sang every word to every song louder than the PA. Like it was one of those types of shows. Yeah. And my drummer Gary was like, holy fuck. He's like, he's been in bands for years. Like he was in a band that did Warp Tour back in 03 when, when we were doing it, you know, like um, we actually found a photo of him standing on the side of the stage oh, cool. watching us play. Um, and he was like, I've never experienced anything like that. Like that was insane. So to me, it's like, it doesn't matter how many times we played it. It's the reaction that we get. And the, you know, it's that to me that will never fucking get old. Like that's the, for people to be that stoked about a fucking song that I wrote, you know, yeah. like that's fucking, that's what makes it cool. But yeah, like in kind of like in the bridge, we do a medley where we do like three or four songs. We change it up every once in a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, it's, it, it, like I said, like, I feel sometimes that these songs, although I, I wrote them in fucking 2001, 2002, 2000, whatever it was, um, sometimes, like, like, at least to me, they resonate more now than they even did back then. Like, when you're singing a song like Rooftops, it, like, that mm -hmm. nostalgic feeling from, uh, you know, is way stronger now thinking about being a kid and fucking hanging out mm -hmm. and just having bears and fuck, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it sort of hits a little bit more now even than, than it did back then, I think, but we're a big bunch of us are big movie guys. A lot of this, uh, guests that bring on are from different movies. And we, we said the same thing about movies. You'll watch something from your childhood. So I watched Jurassic park and I'm like, Oh, I remember this is the first movie I can remember seeing in theaters and yep. like, I think we were, we were running out of the theater. It was raining. We we're pretending I was probably like 11 running yeah. away from the fake T-Rex. And now I watch it and I can't watch the kids get attacked in the Jeep. Cause I have right. two little kids and I'm like, right. I can't, I can't even like, I don't want to watch. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't yeah, care about that. I was just like, well, go back. Cause I always liked, you know, Ian Malcolm, uh, um, Jeff Goldblum's from here. So it was like, even then it was, we did, you know, they told me who he was and they're in this dinosaur movie. I'm like, go back to Jeff Goldblum. I like the guy with the all black wearing the glasses. Get away from these right. stupid kids. And now I'm like, man, I can't imagine if I was there and my kid was climbing the fence and the electricity comes on. He flies off like he's losing my mind. This, this fucking uh, Jurassic Park. And, you know, but, and that makes total sense. Um, yeah. yeah, hitting. Someone put a, a, was an acoustic set Hanson did and they slowed down Umbop and someone put the lyrics and they're like, tell me this isn't a whole different song than you remember. And it was about right. people looking down on you and treating you like shit and fuck them. You have to do your own thing and it's a big world out there. I'm like, this is Zumba. Like, I don't think it's the same. Is it the same fucking song? It sure as yeah. fuck was. I'm like, man, it does hit differently after all these years. For but sure. I know sure. exactly sure. what you mean. Do you have um, favorites? If you had to pick favorites, whether it's an album or songs or songs, even just based on like crowd reaction, or do you have like your top, you know, your group of top songs? I mean, it's the, the, it's more of like, I, I think I agree with the fans for the most part. Like, you know, the fucking drawing board and the rooftops, um, jaded, fucked up kid. Like those songs just for some reason seem to seem to resonate. And, and uh, I mean, like I said, like, like that show in St. Louis, they sang every word, every, there's every, you know, yeah. to every song. So it's like, but um, yeah, I mean, like we could play in front of like a crowd that and maybe doesn't know every single song and then like drawing board always hits you know like right. certain songs that like no matter what people people know like obviously they're never like radio hits but for some reason those were the songs that got to people oh yeah so people keep mix, putting drawing board on this feed like crazy so it must yeah, be the... it, it was probably like the mixed cds where somebody's just burning a bunch of shit and giving it to their friends and uh, that would be one of the songs that they would have put on there you know oh, not yeah. even knowing the fucking band name yeah because they got it off a of lime wire or right. win mx right. yeah and then ruin their uh, fucking parents' fucking PC. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, messed in uh, porn on LimeWire, and that's, that's yeah, what did exactly. it in. Uh, I, I made a note I had to tell you. We used to copy your style, man. It was like messed, lit. There's a handful of bands that was like, uh, we weren't tattooed yet. We weren't like allowed to do 
certain types of clothes or hair or whatever. And uh, yeah, man, credit where it's due. I mean, there was like a lot of shit I was doing. Like, well, these this group of dudes who were, are out there already making it and like the shit we're playing in our cars. I'm like, we should probably just try to do it like that. And you got like right. lit rolling up in like old 60s, 50s cars, song Cadillac. We're like, I'm telling you, man, these guys haven't fucking figured it out. We just we got to get the red, big red cars first and then the ink and then we'll get the girls. Maybe that'll yeah. work. I feel you, dude. Like, I was thinking about that today because I'm getting uh, a tattoo <clears throat> for my daughter, Rebel, on my hand. And it's a straight rip. It's the same tattoo that uh, Mike Ness has on his hand. It's the poison girl. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Set list in an auto. Uh, a buddy was on working backstage, and he asked him, ironically, um, yeah, big social D guy. So it's, it's the same tattoo that he has on his hand, but I'm gonna and the banner underneath is gonna be my daughter's name, and it's like, and then I have the fucking social D tattoo. Oh yeah. Right there in that hand, and it's like I just started to see it as like the butterfly effect of like everything happens in stages and like I wouldn't be who I am right now everything would have happened if it wasn't for certain things in my life and like I mean I remember being 12 years old and pretending to be Mike Ness in my room you know and it's like I always looked up to him as like that's the fucking coolest dude you know and like I wouldn't have my daughter if it wasn't for me getting into music and you know what I mean the whole oh, yeah. path of everything so like sort of a tribute to social D and to and then obviously to my daughter so like yeah I get it like it's the you see people and you're like, that's fucking, that's what I got to do. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was buying the exact, uh, like studying a handful of you guys. I'm like, those are clearly Dickie's pants. We can get those. I'm like, uh, right. three quarter baseball shirt. I don't remember. I'll have to go to Pacific somewhere and see if they have that. And it was like, all right, I got the shoes. I wonder if there was a Good. decline in Dickie's, uh, after like 2006. There, there had there to be. Had that's to be, all right? we had. It was, you went, we went and just had all the shorts and like six colors. And then right. the pants in like the six colors, like the khaki, the gray, the navy, the black, the whatever. That's it was just like, well, put on some fucking hoodie or t shirt and you're done. Right. Uh but yeah, I don't know. I think I have one pair left and that's yeah, I don't know, I'm man. They starting, they I had to take wear, a hit. I don't wear dickies now, but I have bought like now I'm wearing pants that are this, almost of like the same material. Okay. But they fit. They're just not baggy as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Actually fit and, your body. Yeah. Yeah. I realize I've gone back to uh my younger is but like my my stepdaughter she's like she's wearing dickies now and shit and like shorts that look like oh, that. Yeah. it's a whole fucking i'm like i was there before you buddy i'm like yeah, i started that shit yeah i think vans might have taken the place of uh dickies in 06 yeah i mean that's what happened sure complete yeah, yeah. switch uh i saw four chords coming um coming through right below pittsburgh it's actually washington county but it's like an hour outside um yeah. how dope is it playing with like over the two days you know like like 20 some bands you know like these big festivals mm -hmm. versus you know hitting a, a smaller venue with like three or four bands with you what's the difference i mean like do you prefer one or no nah, i mean no nah, i fucking i love it all you know like if you're playing in front of i mean like i said like that show in st louis you know there's maybe like 300 people there and it was fucking awesome right like you get off stage and it's like i just connected with 300 people for an hour oh yeah um but i still I feel like I can still make that connection performing in front of fucking 10,000 people, 5,000 people, whatever, you know, like it, cause I think it's like the, what you're doing, like the way you perform it. And it's like, you can still perform the same way and give that much energy and get the, if you're a performer and you know what you're doing, you can get 5,000 people into it the same way you can get 300 people into it. You know what I mean? That are diehard fans. So I think it's up to you as a performer. Um, but I, I fucking, I love it all. Like it's, there's, you know, fucking, there's nothing cooler than being in front of five, 10,000 people. You know what I mean? It's fucking oh, yeah. it's the coolest shit ever. You're going to be doing it forever? Uh, uh, it's, oof. I mean, as long as my body holds up, we'll see. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to try to rock it through a couple questions I had as a lightning round, but then there was a bunch of people submitted questions too. Okay. If we tried to do them all, it'd take forever. So sentence or two try to get a lot of these people's questions out uh mine are pretty quick chips ahoy versus oreos where do you stand that's a rough one so i grew up with chips ahoy and i like oreos but you know what i like i like the oreo thin ones that they make good answer uh brendan from weedus had the best answer yet and it was entomans 
I'm like, oh yeah, Enemas, man. I was that was all in my household growing up. We, eat, I mean, we eat the, the donuts. Yeah. I don't, know, I, I don't know if I've ever had the cookies. To be honest. Cookies are dope. Uh, burgers or dogs? Fuck, you, you just fucked me up again. <laughs> I literally over like the past week, I've ate in two different sittings two hot dogs and made them as close to Chicago style as possible. And then today I made hamburgers. Good. I, I'll take the first party answer. Chicago is the best style yeah. dog. I went to Chicago yeah. and I, I was blown away. I was a hot dog yeah. guy, but here, Pittsburgh style is just you dump as much shit on it as you can, whether it's a salad or a sandwich or a hot dog. Right. Put as much crap on it as possible. And then you have and, uh, ketchup on it, right? Oh, tons of ketchup, yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, a Christmas Story. Nice. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. First movie in a theater that you've ever seen? Batman. 89. I like Keaton Batman. Yeah. You excited to see him again in the bat suit? Yeah, I think it's fucking awesome. It's fucking sweet. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite piece of memorabilia? Um, I do. It's it's this almost the same thing you have behind you. Um, so I got the uh, Mommy's Little Monster record when I was on tour with Social D. I bought that. We were on tour with them, and then Mike signed it. The whole band signed it, and I got like, a couple pictures from them, and it's all framed. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> Uh, what's something you're most proud of? Um, I think like being a dad, you're supposed to say your kids, right? Like that's like, I, I fucking, I made kids, but I'm like, that's just injecting sperm into somebody. Like, you're not yeah, really that talented. You know what I mean? Like anyone could do it. Yeah. A lot of accidents <laughs> fucking happen. We'll yeah. see that. Um, especially with Father's Day coming up, we'll see all the poor moms that made bad decisions oh, yeah. with who they had kids with um but uh my fuck man um i this is a it's not a short answer but, but i won't make it long i think it's what, my most proud moment your call it was uh yeah most proud of proud moment absolutely counts. I, I think the fact that i'm 43 years old and I fucking i still live like i'm 23 i play ice hockey in a bear league i play music like my main thing is like the fact that like I grew up getting I got kicked out of high school was always the like you're not gonna do anything and it was like I'm gonna do what I want to do like I feel like the education system's fucked up I feel like we tell kids that they have to live a certain way and I, I always feel like you should feed into kids uh, what they you know what they want to do you know what I mean they're and, telling us go to college that's what it was go to college go to college right. and we all went to college and none of us are using the degrees and have. 50 right. 100 grand in debt right so i i think the fact that i have lived by since day one that i'm gonna do things my way and I, i'm still doing it i think that's probably that would oh be, yeah that would be that would be my answer cool i'm gonna try to shoot through some of the quicker questions uh how did the upcoming tour with bowling for soup come about um Known those guys since 2003. We did Warped Tour with them, been friends with them for over 20 years. Um, toured with them in 2019 with them and Real Big Fish. Um, and then, uh, actually, we were, we were discussing doing a tour with us and Phoenix TX, like a co-headlining sort of thing, to go back out together, same era type of things. Yeah. Um, and our agent mentioned it to Jarrett, and he was like, that'd be rad. And he goes, well, maybe we should just take that as the bands with us. So that was the initial discussion. Um, Phoenix TX then decided that they just want to do festivals. Um, so it changed everything, but we were already in for yeah. us. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, and like I, me and Jared talk pretty frequently. And it's like the thing where when you're this age and uh, going out on the road, you really only want to go out on the road with people that you're friends with, like, cause you want to have a good time. Like, it's like, you don't need the fucking drama anymore right. and stuff. And we just have a fucking great time together. So it's one of those things where it's like, cool, let's go out on the road for a couple of weeks and have fun. Are they in uh, another segueing into my buddy Keith's question? Would you call them uh, one of the favorites? Like as blowing for suit, one of the favorites, obviously you're saying you want to pick people you want to have a good to time with. Does it? Perfect, absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. What yeah, are some I mean, others? Um, I, you know, we did the short four show run recently with um, Authority Zero and Unwritten Law and met the Authority Zero guys and just like 
clicked with them. There's one of those things where like it's just fucking same lifestyles, everything, you know, and just good dudes. And they're on it, which is fucking awesome. Like um, Dally, the drummer, didn't even know it. I thought, because they're from Arizona, so I thought he lived out there. Dude lives like 10 minutes from me, had no idea. So like we've hung out, he just can't, you know, like we have, when we have birthday parties and shit like that, he comes over and like, um, so those dudes are fucking fun to tour with. Um, I mean, back in the day when we were touring, all of us bands were legit friends. So, I mean, when we toured with Lefty and Sugar Colt and Good Charlotte and the movie Life, it was like every tour was a fucking party because That's everybody sweet. legitimately got along. Is that how people end up on uh, tracks of yours? I mean, you mentioned Good yeah, Charlotte. Yeah it's, yeah, it's friends, you know, like it's yeah. always that thing. Of like, I mean, like on, on the new record, um, my uh, dude I became friends with over the past couple of years, Spencer, sings in a band called Ice Nine Kills. Oh, yeah. And he's a big Mest fan. Um, so he asked me to be on his record. Did that a couple of years ago, and now he's on our record. So it's just one of those things where it's like, come be on the fucking song. Yeah, right. You know? Like it's... Uh, Eric asked if you can play Change uh, when you hit Connecticut, the Hamden show. That's actually one of the songs where I was saying how like we, there's certain songs we've never played live. And um, Adrian, who was playing, uh, he sings for Zebrahead now, he was playing... Uh, guitar for me for a couple of years he brought that song up when we were doing the real big fish tour in january 2019 and i never thought about playing that song and it would go well with real big fish i was thinking there's like some reggae ska shit in it oh yeah um it went over great live i love playing it live um it's not, not currently in the set though all right sorry eric go check catch you on the next one um yeah. you, suzanne asked if you still feel like uh your biggest following is in chicago um, you mentioned St. Louis, but yeah, she was asking if it's uh, like the hometown vibe I mean, is, is still I, there. I feel like every band, their hometown is always going to be their biggest following. Like that's sort of just how it goes. But I mean, California is great to us. Um, Mexico is great to us. Like it's, you know, there's just weird spots where like something clicks and it just stays, you know, so. Nice. Here's a cool one. Uh, Jake asked, it's Friday night in 1998 and you have 50 bucks. What's your first stop? Thornton's gas station on Western to get a fucking cheap ass beer. <laughs> so yeah, to get some fucking Milwaukee's bastards, some King Cobras. Nice. Uh, another guy asked if you remember the guitars used on the Dilia video and if you know what happened to them. Uh, uh, some of them I've sold to people. Um, and then I think, I think I sold the ones that are in the videos. Um, I still have like one of them. I think they're called, Na well, it was Fernandez was the company, but I think the actual, um, the like model was native, I think. Okay. But I'm not completely, I'm not completely sure. But yeah, I, um, I still have one of them in my storage. Nice. The Britney Spears one I actually just got, um, I pulled out storage and my buddy fixed it up for me and got it working again. My Britney Spears one. Nice. Uh, another buddy of mine uh, thanks you for uh, the mother's prayer reminds him of his mom and he wanted you to know that appreciate that yeah that's that's one of those songs that connects with people yeah for sure uh, another guy asked if you remember his aunt Don Allard I know the name that's all I got from him <laughs> so yes the, the answer is sure is she from Connecticut that's I think fuck, man. that was yeah I think that was the same same dude yeah Cool. Let's see. I think one more popped up so we can get, squeeze one more in. And I know uh, you definitely gave me, me more than enough of your time, man. Uh, last one. Where was the Wasting Time album cover art taken? Uh, uh, somewhere in California. Um, just at a house. I don't know. It's weird, awkward situation. I remember I had a hard time going in to the house at first because it was something that wouldn't be done nowadays i don't think yeah right <laughs> yeah not not in this uh environment no. 2023 we, we get in trouble for that shit <laughs> yeah. yeah well cool man um i'm not gonna hold you up any longer this has been awesome and i really appreciate you taking the time and doing uh, a shot with all of us sure man and uh june 20th is my birthday and so i'm releasing uh a clip of some new music uh which will be on facebook instagram all that shit so people nice oh yeah some of the new shit 
Someone just asked as you were saying it too. They said, "Where's yeah. where that video you filmed already?" Yeah. <laughs> well, there's you your answer. You see a small clip and see what it's about. Go. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna try to make it out to the uh, Washington to see uh It's kid stuff, so it's like juggling, you know, schedules and all that. But uh, and I no. saw VIP sold out instantly. I'm mm -hmm. like, God damn, that's that's how I do it anymore, man. Is can I get upstairs? Can I get like front row balcony? Can I get the bar on the third floor? Right. I mean, I, the rancid pit. I was telling the story. A rancid pit ended my my pit days. I thought I was going to the hospital. So I'm like, all right. I think my days with that are done. I got to make sure I can, you know, play hockey with my kids. And uh, I think it's VIP or bust most most of the time anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'll go in. Yeah. You know, we went like less than Jake pit, but we're all skanking. It wasn't like it was a pit pit. Right. Uh, or but then I end up yeah, at that... Die Artist Murder, and I'm against the back wall, just like this. I'm just like, I can't. I can't break my nose. I can't do it. I need these hands for work. I can't. I can't get in that pit. But, uh, but yeah, that, yeah. That was one of the questions that Four Card asked me was, "What's a must need at a festival?" And I was like, "Well, I don't go to them, but because I'm too old. But if I'm playing them, I'm like, I need a fucking dressing room and some water. Hell yeah! I'm like, I need to be able to stay in my own area because yeah, I'm not I'm not about that. I got lucky touring around that I got to open for a bunch of bands where they asked for all that shit. So it had nothing to do with us, but it was right. like playing with like Hinder. They were like, oh, this green room has to be stacked. I'm like, these guys are great. Right. Great right. idea. Just handing us, you know, handles of vodka. We're like, okay, I'll do whatever you guys say. We're, we're in, man. We're lifers. We're Hinder lifers now. And then you got to do the ride or rescue where whatever they leave behind, you just take for yourself. Uh, it was all the girl girls. The girls would take, they would just look behind and purse, 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 purse. Yep. Walking out with cases and handles and, yeah, drinking in the street. That's the way to do it. Cool, man. Well, uh, this has been great. I appreciate it again. And thanks for all these people you brought over. Um, I'm seeing my followers jump up, which is always cool for me, man. Um, awesome, and, guys, there's no money. This is me just trying to get in touch with people that I, I enjoy talking to. So, I mean, stop by. It's all genuine. Um, this is just Tony being an awesome dude and saying yes and chatting us up for a while. So, thanks again, my friend. For sure, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. See you guys. Cheers.